All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Weekly Dev Livestream. And uh, we are continuing to work on the BXJS Weekly website. There is a bunch of uh, core or chore, how do you pronounce that word? I'm not sure. Chore things that I wanna do. And the first one is actually someone noticed that I don't have any license in BXJS Weekly um, repository with the links, right? So, and this is what I wanna fix because it sort of makes sense to have one, right? And uh, I'm not a very picky person, so I'm just gonna just gonna copy my. Um, I think I have one in the website, and it is, if I remember correctly, this should be MIT license. There we go. Building XJS. Uh, yeah, that looks fine. In 18, 2019, I guess I probably should update that uh, as well, but. Whatever. Um, right. I. You know what? I don't even need that year there because who cares about copyrights and years? Let's just leave it like this. There we go. All right. Let me add the license and we can start working on the website itself. Right. Uh, git commit add license closes. Um, I'm not sure which issue was it. Let me have a quick look. That was issue number uh, 15. Why the hell did I have so many issues? Okay, but I mean, I'll take it. I guess it also counts. Uh, oh, God, is that my password? I forgot. Yes, that is my password. Okay. Um, I guess I can just push it. And there we go. So I've, uh, whoops, nope. Okay. I guess we first have to fetch everything because I probably done something online and forgot about that. Right. Uh, get push. So I think it should have rebased, so we should have a nice clean um, history, right? And let me just check. Yep, that looks okay, right? Cool. So we're good. All right. So I no longer actually need that. Um, what we do need is uh, the XJS website, right? And we are going to continue our last the, the thing that we were doing last time. So we were changing how the webhook works and how exactly the data is fetched, right? So this time around, it actually downloads the URL, we get the data, and um, so we're gonna hook up the MongoDB this time around, we're gonna write it in there. And I'm thinking maybe we should even, so right now when you go to the website, you can see that uh, those episodes, they are all fetched, my cat is going insane in the background, uh, all of those website, uh, sorry, all of those episodes are fetched from the GitHub itself, right? So Whenever uh, whenever a user clicks on any of those links, this is the markdown directly from the GitHub and this markdown is rendered directly here, uh, which is okay, but I'm thinking maybe we could ditch that and ditch requests to GitHub all alone and just use the data we have to render the articles in some neater way. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Because I mean, we have the flexibility now of having everything in a database. We're actually gonna have extended data about the articles and everything, so why not use that, right? Uh, but for starter, we are gonna we are gonna take all of that. So I think I'm gonna just extract this stuff um, to a function, and uh, I guess yeah. So we might not need this anymore, but okay, let's just leave it for now. So let's just create a new file called how do you call it? Like a um, data processor, I guess, data pro processor JS, right? And then uh, just gonna do module exports. And this is gonna be a function that uh, it has to be a sync function, right? That basically does something. And I guess we don't really care about the returns much over here. So this is exactly what we want. And in this case, we want the release URL. Uh, right, so let's just copy paste the stuff here. We want the base URL, which is also fine. Um, right, we need our fetch. Where's my fetch? Um, blah, 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 blah. There's my fetch. Okay, so we need our fetch thing. And I think that is actually it. Right. So, okay, and then here, what we do is we say, okay, const uh, process new data, let's call it this way. And we're going to require that function from data processor. And essentially going to say await process new data, Wait, we don't actually have to await it, right? So we can just trigger the execution, 
trigger execution in the background and tell uh, GitHub we're good, right? So we just, we're gonna schedule the execution for the background and then we're just gonna tell the GitHub that we're actually totally fine, right? So we process the hook, we're okay, we're running, we're working. And uh, in this case, what I wanna do, so I'm gonna do console log, uh, I guess we're gonna do JSON stringify data. I'm gonna pretty print it with two symbols. And uh, uh, right, so let's just uh, call this const process, right? And Da, 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 right, okay, good. And then do module export process. Uh, just so that I can actually test it in place, I'm gonna do it like this, which means that now we can focus on this file, at least for this stream, right? So I'm gonna go into VSL again. I probably should disable my antivirus, but I don't think we're gonna install anything now. So I guess it should be fine. So if we run node data processor, we should actually see uh, the latest release. Right, it is very big. Uh, the data file basically includes all of our articles. This is 2070 of them. That is a lot actually, man. Been doing this for quite some time. So we got the file name, episode, URL sets, and all of that stuff, right? So what we need to do now is we need to take that and throw that into the database. I guess we're just gonna go with MongoDB maybe? I'm, I'm thinking like, there's, there's a bunch of options, right? So we can go with MongoDB, we can go with Postgres, we can go with CouchDB or whatever. I'm not sure what would be the best way, but um, I guess let's just go with Mongo because why not? Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll just I'll just roll with MongoDB. I think I need a Docker for that because I honestly don't want to install it locally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have package JSON over here. We're gonna have uh, separate commands. We're gonna have Mongo starts and it's gonna be Docker run. Uh, hey Kevin, welcome to the stream. So we're gonna start the Mongo in. Uh, using the npm script, right? So it's gonna be mongo run minus d minus p, uh, hell if I remember mongodb ports. So I'm gonna go to the hub docker com and say, okay, I want mongo. And I think it was like this, always this very obscure port. Uh, yeah, thank you, there we go, 27017. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> So we map it to this, we give it a name, let's call it bxjs mongo, and we say we want a mongo latest, right? Um, this is basically all we want. So theoretically, once the Docker starts, um, is it running? Where's my Docker, come on. Uh, uh, what is happening? Um, where is my pop-up? Okay, I, I, I mean, <laughs> you know what? Let's just try it this way. Are you running Docker PS minus A? Uh, yes, you are, and there are some things there. Oh, that was from my work on uh, Exoframe. Okay, I can just I can just kill and remove everything. Um, let me just make sure that I don't have any services. We're good. Okay, cool. So we can save that. We can do npm run mongo start right, and we should actually have. Okay, it actually should pull the mongo first. Meanwhile, while it is pulling it, we're gonna create mongo clean, right? And it's gonna be docker stop bxjs mongo and then docker rm bxjs mongo. Whoops, mongo, okay, cool. So for now we should see mongodb running, the port is mapped, everything is great. And um, so what do we need? Right, so we got the mongo running, we got the clean command start commands, now we need the uh, mongoose, I guess, right? So uh, this is the easiest way to work with MongoDB, I guess. Yeah, so we are not this mongoose, we need ODM, there we go. I guess since we're going to be installing stuff, let me just disable the virus protection as it makes VSL painfully slow, there we go. All right, so going back to this, we need to say npm install mongoose, right? And meanwhile, I can just uh, take this and 
we would need a bit more setup over here. So I guess we are going to create a folder called DB. Going to have index file that is going to export everything for us. We're going to have the DB itself. Uh, that is not a folder. That should be a file. Um, Held the message. Why? <laughs> Automod apparently doesn't like your critique for Mongo driver. I don't know why, but I'm going to allow that. I don't like Mongoose. I use the native Mongo driver for Node. I actually quite like Mongoose. I, I don't think I've had any problems with it, to be honest. But I mean, it's, it's a, you know, a thing of preference. Uh, hey, not buff. Welcome to the stream. All right. Um, let me see. So we set up the Mongoose over here. We I think this is not so I want to set up the connection. Um, I think it's just too zoomed in. Yeah, so I want to set up the connection as a separate entity. There is a way to do that. But I don't remember. Obviously, I don't remember how to do that. So uh, we need need a guide. I need a guide for that. I think I think I mean, is there is there a project where I can look this up? Because I am too lazy to remember all of that. Uh, appear <laughs> apparently, um, well, <laughs> What is why is native Mongo a banned term in Automod? This is some ridiculous stuff. Okay, let me think. Do I have any projects where I can grab the MongoDB stuff from? Uh, right, so I got the gods. No, 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 no. Not really. Okay, that is unfortunate, but I guess we're gonna find how to do that. There we go. Mongo create connection is what we want. So yes, multiple connections, although we don't need multiple connections, I still want to have access to the connection um, item. Right? Because um, so we don't need options, we don't need any of that. We just need MongoDB localhost, right? And it actually this thing, so this should be DB. Um, we should add this to the config. Uh, I guess env config would be fine. So this is going to be Mongo URL is going to be by default MongoDB localhosts. Otherwise, it's going to be process and Mongo URL, right? So because we will have to override that uh, once we start deploying. Right, so we got this, we got this, we need to import this from I think I already imported it over here. There we go. So we need to throw this in here and say that this is uh, yeah, this should be two levels up, right? And this will be server runtime config dot mongo URL. There we go. So we create the connection. Once the connection is created, I believe we can just work with it as if you know, uh, you're know you using the object essentially. And do, 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 let me think. So we got this and we can, yeah, we can just say, so instead of mongoose model, we would use um, on my model. And in our case, the model is gonna be article, right? So we're gonna say article over here. And let's call it article schema. So we're going to describe article schema is going to be new schema, uh, except it does no schema. I think it's mongoose.schema, right? Schema, yes, there we go. And uh, where is our schema? So if we run node server process data processor, Okay, there's 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 our data coming in, but we actually would need more than that. But I mean, that's a good start, right? So we got just copy this, throw it in here, and then just uh, whoops, why why didn't you copy it? Come on, I pressed copy. Stop screwing with me. There we go. Okay, so cool. So we got ID, which is a number. We got category, which is a string. We got title, which is a string. We got URLs, which should be a type string. And this one should be unique, right? So this is our unique identifier. Um, what theme am I using for VSC, those icons? I believe the icons are not included. And hell if I remember my theme, but let me just finish with this. And I can tell you what I'm using. So this is going to be a string. This is going to be a string. And this is going to be a string. Not exactly complex um, 
thing. Okay. Right, so let me see. Theme. Uh, color theme is one dark pro and icons. Uh, yeah, icons is material icons. There you go. So it's one dark pro and material icons. All right. Um, now let me think. So we need, we need what? We need exports article equals article. Exports DB. Um, I guess it would be better to do it like this DB, right? So we need the DB to initiate the connect we'll wait for a connection i guess and do stuff like this okay cool so we got this we got the article we got the article schema we actually want more than that right because at one point we'll start extending that so you know what i'm going to add additional option and say that strict is going to be false so that the mongoose doesn't go and trim the options that are not in schema which should work just fine for our case, again, I feel like schema is going to be changing a lot and we'll see if Mongo is the best choice here. Maybe we'll migrate to Postgres at one point. But for starters, Mongo always works great because you don't have to think a lot about schemas. Uh, right. So what do we have to do here? Right. So now we import stuff from um, database, right? And I actually forgot. Right. I actually put everything into DB so I can as well kill that and rename this into index. And I mean, I think we, you know, once we extend the schema and once we add more features, we probably would end up having, ah, oh man, do I really need another folder? I probably don't, right? So let's, let's just keep it simple for now. Let me just throw this DB into server, kill this folder because we don't need it. And uh, we are all good. So from DB and then I can uh, require, so we, we, we actually need only article in this case, right? Okay, so data is an array, right? So we want to iterate over data and create new articles for each entry and then just store it into MongoDB. So what we're going to do, uh, so I don't want to do, so you can just say, you know, for each or whatever and run the saving in parallel, but I guess in our case, it doesn't matter. Like we have a few thousand articles at most or a few thousand entries. So we might as well do it in parallel because why the hell not? It's way more efficient to do batch saving, but I like we, we work with so little data that it doesn't really matter to be honest. So data for each. I, no, you know what? We're not going to do for each. We're going to do map item. And this is going to be a sync. I'm going to say, okay, so here's the article. It's going to be new article uh, from item, right? And then we're going to say await article save. And that's basically all we really have to do. And what I want to do here is I'm going to say await promise all, right? So I'm going to wait for until all of them are written. Uh, this should be here. And uh, this is basically it. Console log done writing articles to DB. But there is a problem, right? So we should be able to so wait, wait a second. First, let's try that it actually works. We should see current URL string parser is deprecated pass option. Okay, so we got to pass some new option on connect. You need to return something from the map. Not really, you don't have to return anything. I mean, uh, the map is gonna execute like the functions will execute anyway, right? So it's gonna wait for them to finish anyway. Uh, you can return or you have to return something if you are gonna work with array afterwards, right? In our case, it doesn't matter. So whatever. Uh, if if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I think theoretically that should work. Um, right? Yes, it will be an array of undefined exactly. Okay, so here's the question. Does it just does it slow or uh, have I screwed up everything? Uh, I mean, it will be array of undefined, but uh, shouldn't they be awaited? Because theoretically, the fu a sync function is a promise, right? So it should await it correctly. Uh, here's the question, right? So let me, uh, I guess, let me start my terminator and let's have a look. So I think it should work unless I'm forgetting things. Uh, maybe you are right and maybe I should return. Uh, then I, it, it might be that I just forgot things and I'm an idiot. Right, so let's do we got this docker exec minus it um, bxjs mongo, we're gonna go into shell what? Um, 
a Vim PTY. Okay, what are your input devices? Not a TTY. Ah, oh, I already had that problem. Um, thank you. Really glad to hear that you're enjoying the stream. But I tend to do very stupid things from time to time, so <laughs> it's totally fine. I can be a very stupid guy sometimes, you know. All right, uh, let me think. So not uh, TTY VSL. I remember that problem and uh, how do you solve this? I remember that you could just pass in an option saying that TTY is something. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, alias Docker. Oh, you can, oh, come on, really, you have to do this. In PTY Docker exec shell? No, no, okay, you don't know that command. Okay, I guess, I guess we're going into PowerShell. Um, can I increase the size? No, I can't increase the size like this. How do I increase the size of this medium large font? There we go. Um, it's 24 maybe. Yeah, that looks that looks okay. So let's try Docker exec minus it uh, bxjs mongo shell, right? There we go. Now it works. So we're going to mongo. We did I wait a second. I think I actually used the wrong, the wrong URL, right? Because in our config, Mongo URL contains just the host, but we actually want a database name over here. That's the first thing. Second thing, so we got this. All right, now no more errors. Use bxjs, get collection, uh, well, you know, get collection names is what we want, right? Uh, and there is no collection names. Okay, so I guess it doesn't do anything. So the question is, why doesn't it actually do anything? Let me think for a second. So we got the data, we definitely, maybe I really need to return. Maybe I am just a silly guy who forgot how things work. That happens from time to time. So uh, do you work now? DB get collection names? No, still not. Um, I might have screwed up the MongoDB setup as well. That my oh wait did I actually okay wait a second console log images for my sanity got data this is gonna be data length but no length please this is an array okay uh, let's try this again so we got the DB we can create connection right we connect to the Mongo URL we use the new parser and everything we create a schema oh ra ah, there we go this my, this is my problem i am not using my own connection there we go that should actually fix it all right uh collection ensure index is deprecated okay cool and uh, there are some errors over there unhandled duplicate key error okay what is this um that looks a bit broken MongoDB pool, what? what is this? Where does this come from? Okay, um, should have the index JSON over here, right? No, it, it's not the index JSON anymore. It's actually my data JSON from GitHub, right? So I am curious as to what, but I mean, we, we have to, we have to, we have to support the, execution of the over the same data again right so we have to handle this anyway which means that uh no js pool i guess i had same thing twice somewhere which is a bit unfortunate but okay i guess we're gonna instead of just doing safe we're gonna do try catch uh, we're gonna catch the error and say okay console error and uh yeah whatever I, I think we can yeah we can ditch the return um likely error saving item item error right so we just want to see this and theoretically to the clear uh, nodes we're gonna go get a bunch of errors right now and that is actually a lot of errors why is this happening oh i guess because it's already saved the data in there right so yeah okay db articles um count yeah okay okay 
So I just saved it and we're trying to resave it again. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it and I am gonna rerun that. Yes, exactly, you are right. So I'm just trying to write it again because first time it just saved it. Uh, no, what? Okay, so we actually got some duplicates. Even with a, okay, wait, that's a lot of duplicates even with a clean database. What is happening? Okay, now I'm curious, do I really have duplicates? Um, so error saving item, item error. Uh, can we get a better, better maybe, okay, maybe let's try logging items for now, item URLs. This is what we use as a unique key, right? So if I do this again, we should be able to see clear. Let me just do like this so that we have some, <laughs> some space. I know it's a very silly way to do. Um, articles, articles, fine. So it should be zero, right? There we go. Okay, let's try this again. So uh, collection ensure index is deprecated. I'm not calling collection ensure index. Error saving item. Uh, okay, so first of all, there is some items with an empty URLs, which is something that shouldn't happen. I think there was a way to validate that. Um, Right, first of all, let's see, mongoose validate string. I think there was a way to do that, but I don't really remember. I think there was a very simple way. Yeah, there you go, type uh, number, type string, enum, we don't want enum, we want a unique, we want a size of a string, validate, validator, um, I guess, yeah, I guess we can just do this, right? So we can just say, okay, so it's gonna be a string, it's gonna be unique and, uh, we're gonna get validator, which is gonna take the value. And what we're gonna say is value length, value trim length, right, is gonna be, should be equal, should be more than zero essentially. And value should actually exist. Props value is not, um, should not be empty. I think that should do it. Why are you not formatting it? Format, please. There we go. Sometimes Prettier just breaks and stops formatting things for whatever reason on Windows. Works flawlessly on Mac OS though. So that's, uh, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. All right, so we got, do we really have two of those in there? Now I'm curious. Or is it just the data generation issue? Oh boy, data cleaning, the most fun part of data science ever said nobody ever, but okay. So we got, oh yeah, we do have it. We no, but the, the, this is episodes, this is links. And this is, yeah, we do have it two times. So there are some duplicates. So this is quite expected. Okay, cool. So I actually found some duplicates that weren't found before. Good, uh, this is a good thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is essentially working, right? Uh, I guess let's just log the error to string. It should have to string method, right? Uh, let me drop the database again and we re reinsert that. Collection ensure index is dev. Okay, yeah, so this looks a bit nicer. Uh, and what we want is we want to fix this warning ensure index use creates. Uh, so how do I is there a parameter for this? Yes, this is definitely a mongoose thing and duplicate of yes. No deprecation, blah, blah, blah. Mongoose set. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So this is what we want to do. I guess in our case, we want to set that over the our instance, right? I, I guess so. Let's try this. Uh, right, drop the DB again, clear, uh, no wait, clear, and then run this again. Nope, uh, I guess, I guess not, okay. I guess it's a global property then. Is this what you wanna see? Clear that, uh, no, 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 no. Where is my thing, there we go. And okay, cool, so now it works. We got a couple of empty URLs, which is not a big problem. We got some duplicates. Uh, right, right, right. I guess let's, let's maybe make a bit nicer formatting for the duplicates because right now it's not exactly easy to look at. So let me just do this. I'm gonna use the string literal and I'm gonna be like, okay, so here's an error saving item. 
Here's the item URL. Um, like this maybe and now we're gonna have error to string so that should look slightly nicer I mean it still would be uh, not quite as you know as good as you could make it but we don't really care much about that let me think I need PowerShell drop the database uh, restart the notes and right okay cool that looks slightly nicer uh, maybe you can even break the error to the next line, which would make it even nicer. There we go. Right. Um, I guess I could do it like this. That will be way more readable, right? Okay, uh, let's try this again. So we drop the database, restart, and now we should have a pretty nice output, especially considering that my sizes of everything is increased like 10 times <laughs> more than I usually have it. But uh, all right, cool. So we got some duplicates, which is not a big deal. We got mostly it's working, right? Again, um, as I said, you don't have to return anything from the map. It works perfectly fine because the sync function is a promise. So I was correct on this. I remember things correct for, for once. Um, okay, so we got this. We got it. We wrote it to database, which means that, uh, okay, so we no longer need that. We now have the whole thing in database. The one problem is that our database right now is completely in memory. So that is, uh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. Um, let, me, let me put this back. Uh, the problem is that once I kill the MongoDB in memory or restart my computer or whatever, it all disappears essentially, right? So what we want to do is we want to, I guess it's, it's a good thing for development, right? But we want, well, as in development, like testing new things, for example. But uh, what we want to have is actually volume mounted thing that would not disappear when I restart things. So we're going to create a Mongo volume command, which is going to be essentially the same, but going to have a volume thing. Just going to say pvd slash db, and we'll mount it to um, L if I remember where. Okay, so this is, we no longer need that. So I need hub docker com uh, mongo and I need the volume mount point which should be somewhere in this readme. Where is my volume? Ah, there we go. So it's slash data db. Okay, so right. So now we can do npm run mongo clean, right? That should kill and remove our mongo. So it should no longer be there. Okay, now we can do npm run mongo volume right and theoretically first of all there should now be a db folder i guess not okay so that might be due to the mongo server being um you know what we can do we can just use a named volume instead this this would work pxjs data let's just do it this way because this would work on all the platforms and it doesn't require any path and as so, as long as you don't remove the actual volume it should still be there even upon reboots and everything uh so um, npm run mongo clean right and then mongo volume is what we want to run right so now we run node server pros uh process we should import the data. Cool, it is all imported and nice. We can now uh, close this. So we uh, or not not close, but remove this process immediate execution because we no longer need that. So got the process running. Uh, this is now working. Okay, so let me think. Uh, what I want to test is that first of all, I guess I need PowerShell again. Du -du 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 -du. Uh, Okay, docker exec, can I get it? Thank you very much. Use bxjs uh, db articles count. So just to make sure, okay, so we got our 2000 articles over there. Um, everything's working nicely. Now I'm going to do docker, first of all, let's just inspect it to make sure that it actually attached it, eh, Mongo attached the volume um, and I'm not insane and not forgot how it works because that also happens. <laughs> okay, we got named volume bxjs data mounts to uh, data db, which is perfect. So theoretically, 
if we now kill the container npm run mong uh, what's mongo clean is what I want to write so and I started again with volume we should be able to execute shell again right enter it use bxjs uh, db articles finds uh, no, I guess count would work as well right and they're all still there cool perfect so we basically achieved the same result and it will work equally on all platforms again as long as you so basically that means we now have docker volume ls we now have this bxjs data volume and this is exactly where our data is and how does the path to it looks or whatever is up to docker essentially right so it's all good okay um i guess that might be a good point to commit everything so because we did uh, make a new hook so our hook is now triggers the processing and sends the reply to the GitHub. So basically once the BXJS weekly has the new release, it will trigger the hook, the hook will download the new release JSON file, throw it into the database, ignore all the duplicates. And I think we are all good on this side. So let me see. First of all, um, you know what? I'm tired of having this tiny S console. Uh, where's my Terminator? There we go. Okay, so let me just uh, make it slightly larger so you guys can normally see it. Yeah, Projects, bxjs, bxjs websites. Right. Um, first of all, let's have a look at the diff. So we've added the Mongo, we've added the mongoose as a dependency. We've extracted the process function, we removed the elastic lunar. Okay, cool. Gets, oh yeah, we um, it's probably a good idea to just rewrite the search function immediately, right? Because right now we are not literally not doing anything. So uh, where's my git diff? Last time we used that function over the elastic lunar index, which was okay, but it wasn't exactly perfect. So, Oh yeah, there's another thing we need. Uh, we so we searched over title and URLs, right? So this was two fields, which means that we have to tweak our MongoDB model uh, or schema to actually add the indexes uh, to title um, and to URLs. Oh man, how was how do you add the indexes to Mo Mongoose text index? So MongoDB, in case you didn't know, has a full text search uh, natively and it is decent, like it's not super fast. So if you compare it to Elasticsearch, then obviously Elasticsearch would perform better, but um, right, 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 let me think. But yeah, MongoDB has it and you know, in 2000 documents that will work just as fine. So create, uh, where's, no, I just want Mongoose text. No, this is MongoDB. Can I get mongoose documentation schema? There we go. This is probably what we want. Text uh, index in the compound indexes. Index true um, schema pass secondary indexes. Can I, how do I do text indexes? Can I just say index text? Is that how it works? Valid option auto index short key. Uh, da, 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 da. Buffer capped. Oh, come on, why does it have to be so hard? I know you, you're somewhere here. I know you are somewhere here. Now the question is where? Um, schema type, query model, model. Maybe in the model, no, index. Text, select text. No, this is some selection. Prototype text. What is this? Declares a full text index. Text true, there we go. This is what I want. So we're gonna say title has a text index and this, whoops, this has a text index as well. There we go. So, okay, so this is the first step, right? So as soon as we run the script that basically executes the database, it's gonna re-index the data we have there now and we're gonna get the text indexes. And now instead of, uh, so we don't need processor anymore, we actually want the GitHub file instead of searching over here first of all we need article um, require from database right so we need the db thing and what we're going to say is we're going to say await article uh, this has to be a sync as well right article find 
so that uh, how do you find now mongoose text index right how do you find it there's some special way to query it as well if you want to query a specific text index uh, text search okay so this is what we want and you want to sort by score right so this looks perfect and here's the question does mongoose actually support text index on two fields because it might not right so that's that might be an edge case then we are slightly screwed but let us just uh, see that so we are gonna do that um, this is gonna be let's call it mongo results because those are mongo objects and we want uh, plain objects which are gonna map our um, our two objects it's gonna give us what we want Okay, and now if we do npm start, uh, no, it was not npm start, npm run dev is what we want to execute. Our search endpoint should actually return the articles that we uh, care about, right? So 3000, we need our dev tools, and uh, this is not what I want right now. This is our console, we, uh, right, okay, that is too small. I guess, you know what, let me just move it to the bottom. We go to the weekly and we do the search say google okay so uh, network let us see what it actually does i don't need console right now so where's our search there's the search google all right that looks okay i guess and it also gives us the score uh so why yeah okay google is there that looks fine Mongo also, yeah, I know that Mongo has a stream API, but we don't really care about that right now, right? It's like, it's it's not that, um, doesn't make sense to use it here. I mean, we have 2000 article, why would you want to stream that? It's like, it's a small enough data set that can just work basically. Uh, okay, so it definitely finds in the URLs, definitely finds in the title, or at least, okay, so this this one was found in the title for sure. Question is, this is a title as well. This is the title. Has it found something that only has the URL? So this is both, this is both. Do we have to do two searches and then uh, this is both. Here is the question. I never had a use case where I had two fields that I had to search over using text indexes in Mongo. So. I am a bit in the dark over here. So this, okay, this one definitely was found only by the title. So the question is, does it find it only by the URL? I guess it does, right? Because otherwise we wouldn't see half of those things. Uh, what if we search for google.com? Google.com, uh, well, close enough, I guess. Uh, I guess it tokenizes it differently. God damn it, uh, how do I test it? Also, why does it search by the previous? This is definitely a bug in my search component. Um, where's my, where is my search component? Why does it, we use the RxJS, we use dbounce, and why does it, tab add next query. So yeah, this handles change, right? On change, on key up. Key up just resets that stuff. So this should be the new value. Is is that because I'm distinct until changed? Huh. Okay. I mean, okay, whatever. We can figure that out later on, which which is just a bit weird. Wait a second. Console log search uh, value, right? So we, we should theoretically see the um, google.com. No, okay. And if I press spacebar, we now see Google come without. Huh. So why does this happen? Uh, filter value more than three, we did distinct until changed. Uh, okay. Console log new query. Where does this error propagate from? So, all right, test. Okay, so new query is correct. Google.com. 
but it searches for google.com. What the? <laughs> okay, set query. So it sends the query. Oh, because, yeah, okay, I see. Well, I see what the problem is. New query. This is what the problem is because set query is asynchronous and it might not set it in time to send it to the type ahead function. There you go. This should actually fix it, right? Google.com. There we go. Okay, now it works. Cool. So we found and fixed a tiny bug, which was um, related to the React hooks that are still awesome, by the way. All right, so we got that working. I guess the search is also working. Okay, you know what? We can just try to find, um, so we don't need that anymore, I guess. BXJS weekly. So we got the weekly repo. We got the, uh, no, not the tools, we want the links. And just try to take one of the episodes, find a unique link here that is not present anywhere else and try to search by it. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, blog, well, yeah, there you go. This, this doesn't seem like it's gonna be anywhere else, right? So let's try this. And I guess I have to, okay, so the paste, Hello, why is it not working anymore? Okay, now it works, but it doesn't seem to return any results. Uh huh. So I here's the question. It should be in the, in the where is my PowerShell? It should be in the database, right? So let us check this manually. Um, Docker run. So we go into this. I I probably should stop doing that. I can just do this, right? There we go. Uh, no, sorry, bxjs. Okay, db articles finds. So that URLs is. Um, uh, right, you can't. Well, that that is not what I wanted to press. URLs. Um, what was the Mongo? Oh, Mongo find string includes, uh, what, well, I mistyped it completely, but I know that there is a way to do that contains regex. Okay, so this is what we want. So we got URLs, we got regex, and this is the regex. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. We just want this, right? And yeah, okay, cool. So no. Well, unless I screw that up, it is actually not in the database. Oh, did we have a new release already? I don't remember. That is a good question. Okay, so let me see. This is the URL. Okay, next over again. So this finds. Let's see. So that should be in name, I think, right? Was it or is it title? I forgot how we named it. Uh, it was title. Okay, so it should be in a title. Okay, it is there. And the URLs is okay, I guess I just wrote it not correctly. Hot spile. Maybe you want this? No. Hmm. All right, I guess I am doing this wrong. Not sure why exactly. Oh, you can just use a proper regular expression. Okay, let's try that. That should be way easier. There we go. And uh, got what? Uh, find one. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I is not defined. Okay, so I guess you cannot use regular expressions in the REPL. Is that how it works? What is, uh, yeah, no, it looks fine, right? Now it works. Why is it, okay, whatever. So it actually finds it there. So the, now the question is articles find dollar text um, bots pile. N no, it wasn't the curly brace. It was, it didn't like the stars there for some reason. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, text expect an object, right? I forgot how to write text queries, so I'm gonna cheat a bit and see see over here. Let's pile. Okay, dollar search. Right, so it doesn't find anything. So how does it work? I guess it also tokenizes. 
I get, all right, so I think I know what happens. So basically, the problem is uh, the full text search likely works through tokenization. So it actually generates the tokens from the string. And then using those tokens, it does matching, right? So we have this tips, tricks, and bit sized awesomeness, or we actually got the title extravagantly fast rendering with React Bender. So it's actually going to split them into tokens using spacebar likely, and then use those tokens to create an index which works just fine for titles, but since uh, URLs is just a string, this is not going to work. So I guess, um, first of all, we can remove the text index on URLs because it's basically useless. And what we're going to do is we're going to Mongo results. So we're going to do double search, essentially. We're going to do title results, right? So we're going to do search text search over titles and we're going to do um, URL results. And we're going to do article finds, uh, we're going to say URLs is going to be uh, right. How do I construct? How do I dynamically construct regex? Mongoose uh, find regex. How does there's, there's got to be some way to do that in Mongoose, right? Uh, name regex. Okay, so you can just do th this options I okay. Right, how do I, I guess I can just say, oh, yeah, right, I, I'm, I'm silly. <laughs> I can just use JavaScript, right? There we go, new regex. And then it's going to be um, query. There we go. That's basically all I need to say, right? And what we want to do is we want to say title results, concat URL results, and then just map. So I think we're going to take, let's just limit that because we don't want like 200 results. It's limited to 10 title results and uh, five URL results, say, right? I think that should work way better. So I'm going to restart the whole thing. And now once we actually search for the thoughts pile, we should get the correct match, right? So we should get that URL. There we go. Now it works. Okay, so it was the tokenization issue, essentially. And um, by changing it to a plain text search in the um, URLs, because they are just, you know, strings, we are getting way better results. Uh, regex might be a bit slow again, but you know, who cares? 2000 articles is nothing for a database. So this is actually now working and we got exactly the same format as we had before, which is kind of nice. And okay, uh, there is rising stock children with the same K. Oh, okay, I guess we have to. Okay, so first of all, I want to do this in parallel, which means I'm gonna do what I'm gonna say await promise all and I'm going to have an array here, which is going to be, so I'm going to copy this. So it's going to be an array of two things, right? There we go. Promise all. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use destruction to do this like this. Uh, whoops, that is wrong. All right. So what, what happens now is basically it executes both queries in parallel and then returns the results immediately, right? So what we want to do is we want to actually filter URL results so that results URLs uh, I guess okay you know what let's let's split this up so let me think what we need we need const um, title let's call it title URLs so we're gonna title results map res to res URLs right and uh, this is going to be just an array of URLs now. And now we're just going to do filter our, our URLs. And basically, we need to say that title URLs includes our URLs uh, not includes, right? So there we go. I think this should do it. So we basically get all the URLs and then we make sure that the results from the URL search are not already in title results. I think that should alleviate those errors in the UI, which basically come from the double results that are exactly the same. 
Okay. Refresh that. Unless I screwed anything up, this should work. Cool. No more errors. Nice. Um, nice results over here. All of this still works. We got the nice categories and everything. And our search is actually way snappier than it was before. Chrome. Yep. And it seems to work pretty damn nicely. Um, Chrome 10. Yeah, looks great. Cool. So we got the search working with the new structure, right? I guess I should commit that because we basically finished the migration. Let me just make sure that I didn't add anything uh, silly or broken. So, well, no, that's a wrong button. So this is package JSON. This is something I don't care about. All right, this is our Mongo. This is a remove elastic lunar at mongoose. We got our data processor that works perfectly fine as we know. Uh, there is a white space that should not be there. So let me just uh, clean this up real quick. Where is that white space over here? Yep, you should not be there. Right, what else? Uh, okay, so yeah, we still have to create the schedule, like the crawler that would get the full text of articles and then do the tag extraction, entity extraction, whatever the hell we want, which uh, would be a nice continuation of this basically. But otherwise that looks just fine, I think, right? So the search works, everything works. I would need to, um, set up additional stuff on my server to actually redeploy this version. Ah, uh, here's the question. We did configure, we did configure the auto deployments if I remember correctly. Yes, we did. So I actually do need to uh, set this up immediately, I guess, which is a good idea. All right, so we got the Mongo URL and we got to add this into exoframe config. So there we go, we got this. And uh, our Mongo URL should be this and oh boy, okay. Um, hell, if I remember what was the database name on my server. Okay, let me see this uh, SSH. Let me just go into my server real quick. Yes, update my Z shell. I haven't done this in a while. Okay, uh, so I had a MongoDB here, grab Mongo. There we go. So we got, let's, let's use PM Mongo, why not? We could use PM Mongo. I don't really need three MongoDBs here. So wait a second, Docker. Do I even need that VL Mongo there? I don't think anything uses it. So we got, yep, I can actually kill it. Docker stop a file Mongo. All right, and all right, there we go. Whoops, uh, let me just make sure that I didn't break any of my demos accidentally. Uh, right, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So we are we are fine, um, we can exit this. So we got the PM Mongo BXJS port 80, everything is fine. Now we don't need this anymore. So I can uh, git commit minus m migrate to MongoDB, uh, MongoDB for article search, right? All right, cool. So theoretically, once I push this, it should be redeployed. And once we re-trigger that webhook, it should re-download data, re-index it, and we should get a nice live working version. I'm not gonna test this on the stream because it will take, I don't know, a couple of minutes to, or more than a couple of minutes to finish this. And I need to make sure that the MongoDB is actually working and everything, but that's basically it for today's stream. Um, so we are gonna continue working on that. As I said, we still have that bit where we have to add, uh, where was it? No, it wasn't GitHub, right? So we have to add, uh, no, it was here, right? There we go. So we have to add the worker that would scroll the articles, get the full text, get the tags, get the descriptions. And we want to actually have the full index in there and you know maybe do some entity extraction, sentiment analysis, I don't know, whatever the hell we want basically, right? 
so that in the end you can not only search by uh, titles but you can only you can also search by other things like tags for example that would be very nice because there is now a significant number of demos in this repo and searching just by title is not very helpful in this case you know all right so if you guys have any questions feel free to throw them into the chat right now if not well thank you very much for watching you can find all the stuff that i did on the github repository the link should be in the description uh, if you want to chat outside of the stream hours, come to our Discord server. We are more than happy to talk about anything about software development or video games or whatever. I am mostly there and will be more than happy to help you with your JavaScript woes if you have any. And uh, yeah, I guess that is actually it for today. Doesn't seem like chat have any questions. So I guess we could just wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, thank you for your continued support. And I see you on Saturday for BXGS Weekly News and on next Wednesday for continuation of the whole thing. So yeah, stay tuned. And if you missed the whole thing, you can watch the VOD on YouTube. Once again, thank you so much and I see you next time. Bye.